2023 has been a fantastic year for video games, but we've also seen some impressively bad stuff come out too. And honestly, we thought that the bottom of the bad games barrel in 2023 would be Rise of Kong Skull Island, a miserable piece of overpriced shovelware that managed to be worse than Lord of the Rings Gollum, which is also like a game that came out and we're like, well, that's the bad one for the year. But if there's one thing you can count on in the games industry is that things can always get worse. And Kong looked like a game that wouldn't be out of place on the old Xbox Live indie games marketplace after people realized that you could actually sell things on it and make money. But just a few weeks later, it got worse. We have now been blighted by a game called The Walking Dead Destinies. It's actually been out for a while. We've been kind of avoiding it because we've already like, we've lifted up that bat like Babe Ruth and called it a couple times now. This is the worst game of the year. And sure enough, it's too early, but it absolutely cannot be ignored any longer. Hi folks, it's Falcon and today on Game Ranks, is Walking Dead Destinies the actual worst game of 2023? Published by Game Mill, which, I don't know, they aren't lying to us with that name at least. It's pretty apt. You know, they criticize puppy mills of like bringing lots of dogs into the world with often unethical breeding practices that prioritize profit over the health and welfare of the dogs. It's just like that, except for a game can't be healthy. It can be good, but Game Mill ain't doing that. So Game Mill got together and said, how can we name ourselves in a way that reflects the fact that we want to just churn out games and don't want to be known for like superior quality or anything. And they were like Game Mill. Game Mill's the name. It's a design philosophy that echoes throughout Skull Island Rise of Kong, but also some other infamous stinkers like G.I. Joe Operation Blackout and Big Rigs Over the Road Racing. So given their involvement, I'm not sure anybody had high hopes for the latest Walking Dead game, but I don't know. There's at least some potential there, like at least kind of an interesting premise on paper. The base the basic idea is that it's retelling the Walking Dead TV show uh, over the course of the first few seasons, and they add kind of a choose-your-own-adventure twist. Kind of, I mean, it's it's a fun idea if you like the show. I tapped out probably not long after this game taps out in terms of the narrative. I think most people left at season seven or eight. I left a little before that, but I know a lot of these characters, so getting the option to change how things play out is, in theory, interesting, at least. Of course, it's pathetic how it's implemented, and, and you know, as is how it goes with everything in this game, but we'll deal with that more in a few minutes. Right from minute one, you know something is off about the game. Uh, Rick has a weird uh, misshapen goblin head, and the way this game just drops you into the first level without even a short cutscene of, like, I don't know, Rick getting up in the hospital bed, it's weird. Feels like corners are being cut pretty much everywhere, and even something as basic as, like, a door opening gets a fade to black because they don't want to bother actually animating a door um speaking of um not bothering to animate some might be tempted to think uh, these uh, cutscenes that's an artistic choice and i'm sure that in court it would hold up art and animation style is very much a subjective thing but i don't buy it there is a whole lot of didn't bother animating stuff in this game like look at it not much going on here let's not mince words this game is ugly all the characters look very weird and off everything barely animates and the environments legitimately and i'm not saying this as an exaggeration the environments legitimately look like they're out of a playstation 3 game um another thing is i, I think there's probably three or four different zombies in the game and oh boy are they reused a lot because i don't mean that there's only like three or four zombie encounters counters in this game i mean like there are three or four zombie types or models in this game like even when you go to the prison they can't even bother to put them in jumpsuits like prison jumpsuits uh they do put helmets on the zombies for some reason but uh you got me as to why the cutscenes in this game are cheap as hell uh they're mostly just static characters looking like that at each other when the game it does suddenly have a second or two of an actual cutscene it's a miracle but it doesn't last and you go right back to like static uh, uh cabbage patch doll that you put in the 
oven for 20, 25 minutes. Now that look, like look at Chain. I mean, you can tell that's supposed to be Jay Bernthal most of the time, but that's not a compliment. Being able to decipher who someone is supposed to be, it, it, well, that's, that's a low standard. And Andrew Lincoln is kind of a weird looking dude, but you know, they even did him pretty dirty here. Like, honestly, these models are pretty funny. They are not good. And we could probably talk for a long time about just that, really drilling down into what sculpting medium a child is trying for the first time and came up with this. But we should probably talk about the gameplay because it was just bad visuals. And, all right, fine. I've played plenty of good games with bad graphics. A good game is a good game, right? Well, this is not that. In the opening minutes, the basic gameplay loop is introduced and it is dire, okay? Like, think Last of Us and take out all the personality, tightness of the controls, responsiveness, just, just uh, everything that makes Last of Us good. Uh, but it's clearly, obviously, inspired by Last of Us. But also, like, it knows that The Walking Dead's biggest success in the gaming arena was the Telltale games, and a lot of the time it feels like they're trying to conjure that, where you have these weird QTEs. And you know what? Uh, Dead Rising-style QTEs as well. I, I mean, they it just cribs so much from other games, but not in a good way. Like, a lot of the time, I like talking about when games borrow from a lot of other different games and brings those mechanics together into something cohesive that works. Again, I'm gonna say this is not that. There's some stealth too, um, but right from the start of that, you can see the problems. Every place you go are these tightly packed arenas swarming with zombies that force you to meticulously clear them out. Sneaking, uh, tedious as hell because zombies move so incredibly slow and the only way to distract them is throwing bottles and it's really in consistent like at least they're dumb most stealth games stretch credibility to the breaking point with how they're unable to notice you in things like tall grass where you're standing like right in front of them but just you're covered in some tall grass that's 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 hard to believe honestly but oh this game goes further smoke first off doesn't dissipate like you know smoke does but second off it makes you completely invisible to the zombies you're not even hidden you're just standing in the middle of a room and and the zombies can't see you I don't know if you remember in the show scent was a big thing of how zombies found you so maybe the smoke makes it so they can't smell you so they just regard you as a moving object I don't know I don't know that's a creative lore oriented reason as to why this weird thing exists in a game but I'm willing to bet that it's laziness actually as opposed to some thought out thing I think they were like well you can't really have grass in the city what's in the city uh what, what, what uh, oh yeah, yeah yeah smoke they got smoke in the city so let's use that instead of grass for this stuff I don't know it's it's a, a stretch but you eventually get tired of standing around waiting for these idiots to turn around. So you run out and start whacking at them. And then you find that the combat is actually worse than the stealth. You get a short window after an attack to perform an instant kill stab move, but you never know if it's actually gonna trigger. Uh, trying to fight close range with a pack of zombies, very frustrating because attacking causes your stamina meter to drain fast. Although maybe not as fast as your patience will. That seems, seems to be just a step ahead of of your stamina meter in these situations. But when that's gone, your attack gets weaker and slower. So most fighters are just slowly whittling down a herd of zombies, killing one, running away and waiting. It's not fun. Uh, that is not enjoyable to say the least. There is an adrenaline mechanic where the meter fills up and you can do a special finisher, uh, which is not a cool thing, actually. You know, usually special finishers are cool. This is not. Probably the best reason to do it, though, is that it restores your health and stamina. But uh, when you do have your adrenaline filled up, like, I, I don't think that it's worth strategically waiting for a good time to restore your health and stamina because your guy just starts yelling, my blood is boiling. 
Adrenaline is pumping! I don't know why those are the choice of words or that your character is even speaking words other than to tell you that the meter is full and that you better use it soon, you idiot. Otherwise, I'm going to keep bugging you. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Is basically the type of dialogue we're talking here. The level's all very small and very blatantly padded. Like, look at this one level where you play as Shane in a flashback. For one thing, it's just an excuse to reuse the hospital again. And there you are at the exit of the hospital. Now you have to go up some stairs, down a few hallways, which is all just a reverse of the first level. But now you have to slowly snipe a bunch of zombies in the corridor to clear things out. Yeah, there's guns. And at least the game is a little less annoying with guns but not mm, a lot less annoying. So you slowly painstakingly clear out the zombies, get to Rick's room from the start of the game. Nothing happens because Rick obviously doesn't wake up when Shane shows up. Otherwise, somebody's misremembering something. Anyway, you slowly have to go back down the two hallways back to the exit. Exactly like the first level. There's nothing accomplished. There was no reason to do this, especially given the fact that this game cuts out like other but they really went overboard here. Like trying to navigate some of these areas is a huge pain in the ass and do not get me started on the quote unquote puzzles. Sometimes you're forced to move objects around to climb up something or open up a path forward. Yeah, but these things look so bad. They're always just a bunch of copy paste. It's like boxes with tires or something on them. They're clipping into everything. They're getting stuck all over the place. There's a part of the farm where you have to get a fire ax and a windmill for some reason. And it evolves some solving a box pushing puzzle which i don't know about you but doesn't look right or feel right it's also not a good box pushing puzzle like if you can figure out how to glitch through the gap uh, which you can i know because i did do so because this whole thing is asinine the levels are pretty short too they're usually about 10 minutes or less and like i said they are really padded a lot of the times the game forces you to team up with other characters which basically amounts to replaying sections of levels over and over again to complete different mundane tasks you never actually see your ally anywhere. It's just a game forcing you to backtrack with a different character. When the game isn't running you through dull levels like this, it's forcing you to survive some boring siege moment where you're stuck in an arena and you have to either survive for a really long time or kill all of the enemies. And they are, they are every bit as boring as everything else in the game. Between the terrible levels, there's this half-assed HQ you return to where you can talk to characters, basically approach them, and they'll give you a line of dialogue. Exactly one line of dialogue and then there's these pointless resolve conflict moments where you get some text you make a choice that's utterly pointless no matter what you say uh, the person you side with says give me a break give me a break and then you give them part of a Kit Kat bar uh, no you don't actually that would be at least something with some personality that happens but no there's one where Lori Rick's wife is upset about losing her son and Rick sides with her and you know what she says says give me a break give me a break and you're like I, your son is dead i don't think the candy's gonna help you what about you you doubt me coral break me off a piece of that kick cat bar <laughs> give me a break and you know, if these things were good and had personality, I wouldn't be making references to snack food. But like I said, at least the game does give you guns after a while. Uh, they are as jank as everything else, but at least you don't have to do melee combat anymore. So for about a second, it feels like the most satisfying shooting this side of Destiny 2. Um, it is not, of course. It's almost impossible to aim precisely, which I guess is why the game is so generous with auto aim, but it never feels feels good. It's stiff, wonky. Um, certain guns feel really overpowered and others feel like nothing. A perfect example of what I'm talking about happens when you fight this heavy walker with a shotgun. It took like 40 shots to take down. But if you use a revolver, it's three headshots. Yes, headshots do extra damage, but a shotgun does so much more damage than a revolver in any real or virtual situation. Seems like a bit of an oversight, but you know, that's what we're talking about with the game. It's even more pronounced when you fight human enemies who are somehow even more bullet spongy than the zombies. 
Uh, humans can take more hits. They'll tank multiple headshots from a sniper rifle. And they're just laughable to fight in melee combat because they're constantly dodging as if they are a Dark Souls protagonist. So the gameplay sucks, but what about the story? Uh, if I can say anything about it that is positive. Um, I mean, on some level, they tried with the story. I don't know what level, but they did do more than Skull Island Rise of Kong. So I guess... You can determine the amount of effort that they put into it, but eh. Okay, there's one other positive. Some of the sound alikes for the characters are decent. Shane's voice actor, for instance, has a pretty decent John Bernthal impression going. I can't go back just yet. I need to find some food for the camp. Oh, let's do this at least sometimes and a few of the other characters are actually all right the choose your destiny can be amusing at times but most of the time these things have almost no bearing on the actual story most of the time basically all it adds up to is a character leaves the group uh either because they died or because they left the group and rather than one guy doing something in the story a different guy does it and some of it makes sense like the first choice where you can choose to handcuff merle on the roof like in the original show or you can let him off that makes some kind of sense uh so there's a moral choice aspect to it even if merle is obviously a, a jerk uh, but it doesn't do a lot and some of the choices are just dumb like this one where you have to decide to either grab some medicine for curl or uh let maggie die choice just boils down to whether one character or the other will die seems totally arbitrary and uh it wasn't some moment where either character could die maggie's still around on the show and Coral didn't bite it until much, much later. Hell, in the comics, Coral survived the whole thing. So what's the point of this choice other than just have one? The real showstopper is around halfway through the game when you get to decide to either play as Shane or Rick. The whole confrontation is incredible. It's like the game trying to do this epic Metal Gear Solid encounter and failing at it in the most spectacular possible way. And so begins the ultimate boss fight where two flailing mannequins spin around in circles on an ugly little farm, shooting each other in the face a hundred times. The boss fight seriously has to be seen to be believed. It's one of the most ridiculous things I have seen all year. I don't think I need to explain how silly it is, which that scene, which is just a tense showdown between two friends or arguably former friends and perhaps one of the few truly resonant highlights of the second season has been transformed into a brainless beatdown that split up into two phases of pain. It'd be funnier if it wasn't as frustrating as it is. I picked Shane just to see what happens and Rick just pulls out his best Frank Reynolds impersonation and just starts blasting. Couldn't run away because he sticks to you like glue. If you try to take cover, he shoots over it and trying to reload is pointless because he just interrupts your reload animation and forces you to start over. The only way to win is to be even cheaper and blast him in the face with a shotgun over and over until he dies. Or does he? No, he rises up again and now it's a hand-to-hand -hand battle while memories flash before your eyes. Seriously, somebody thought this was epic. Well, maybe they, I don't know. It's lame. I'm sure somebody knew maybe somebody thought it was cool maybe I don't I really I just don't know I find it hard to believe somebody thought it was cool I do find it easy to believe that they convinced some CEO that it was enough for people to think it's cool I don't know so I killed Rick Shane became the new leader of the group none of the actual conflict between Rick and Shane was mentioned during the course of the fight they just fight but Shane's the boss now does it affect things Eh, still pretty much the same game. In terms of gameplay, this is worse than Skull Island Rise of Kong. Actually playing this thing is so miserable, it's boring. But here's the thing, it's almost worth it just to see the insane choices you get to make next and what baffling cutscenes pop up. It would almost, almost qualify as so bad it's good, but it's gotta be for a really specific type of person and I have a feeling that it requires more patience than even that person has. If, you, if you're willing to spend $50 on a terrible game just to laugh at it, 
Um, cool. They got they got what you want here. But in, in order for some of the stuff to be funny, you kind of have to have seen The Walking Dead show, which the Venn diagram between these two things I think isn't great. It's all around awful, but it's at least much funnier than Kong. Like, look at any random cutscene, and you will find something to laugh at, at least. That doesn't make it better than Skull Island or Gollum, in fact. I think it was worse, but it was at least more entertaining. So, maybe it's a bit of a wash? I don't know. It's funnier to watch somebody else play it uh, because it's painful to play it. I don't like playing it at all. Like, watch the cutscenes on YouTube and just skip everything else because that's probably the best way to experience it. And I, I'm dead serious when I say this. It's arguably the worst game that's come out this year. I don't think I hate it as much as Gollum or Skull Island because I laughed at it a lot. But, eh, man, was it a slog. And, and this is painful to say, objectively speaking, those two games both do a bunch of stuff better than this game. Which, I mean, I'm finding that funny, even in and of itself. It's shocking, really. It's shocking, this game. You could probably tell from the tone of my voice that this is, this is a wow game for me. Whatever IP holder okayed this has a questionable level of integrity in terms of quality control. That's all I'm going to say. And that's all for today. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. So click subscribe. Don't forget to enable notifications. And as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at Falcon the Hero. We'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.